Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett, this is The Ramble, we go until midnight tonight, midnight, yes, Eastern Daylight Time. Ladies and gentlemen, the face before you is a face I have, I don't think I've seen your face for how long now? Well, in person, over a decade, I think, considerably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we've seen video of one another. We know what we look like, generally. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, because all the stuff we've been doing with the movie reviews has been, you know, on audio. So That's because I generally do it in the nude. Yeah, right, right. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to talk to you about, now what I wanted to do a, a segment with you on, is since you're our movie resident movie reviewer, is the future of movies. I mean, I think if any business has been profoundly affected by the coronavirus, it's been the entertainment business. Profoundly is um, a loose, uh, you know, but probably fairly accurate way of putting it because um, we know there have been massive uh, changes done in terms of distribution because of theaters closing down. They, they've shut down production. And um, in terms of changing the way the, the business operates, mm -hmm. uh, right now there are a lot of protocols that are being put into effect. I know a friend of mine here in L.A. was hired to be basically in charge of making certain that people on television um, in studio sets basically abide by all the dictates that are being laid down for safety purposes. So that's an entirely new job that's been created by this nightmare. Uh, so they are intending to go back to, to work. And in a lot of cases, they've gone back to work to produce things. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, the latest Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe TV series, uh, went back into production uh, in Eastern Europe. Um, there have been uh, a few shows and movies uh, that have uh, gone back into production. There have been people that have done movies and television programs and web shows that are purely done via Zoom. People have done a lot of very intimate solo uh, or uh, two-handers that, that could be done safely. So stuff is being made. But your point, and they've made it on our segment, uh, Culture Blast, is that theaters are going to have a very difficult time reopening considering what's going on. And what's also happening concurrent to the difficulty is people are now becoming accustomed to mm -hmm. watch stuff at home. And uh, again, we joke about this and we've done so for a while here on GabNet. You would just as soon see a first run film in your home, period. The cost of going to a theater, the tickets, uh, snacks are outrageously expensive, parking, transpo. Uh, if you bring more than, you know, your, your wife or your husband or your lover or your pal, you know, if you bring the kids, it's literally a you know, over $100 to go see a movie. When I was a boy, they let you in for free and they gave you free popcorn. Well, you were under you were under 12 years old. You got in for free. I remember well, that. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, actually, that's true. I mean, I was being, you know, flippant, but yeah, it's true. So in a lot of ways, yeah, there are changes afoot. And, and one of the things that streaming... Uh, television has done has to uh, has been to offer uh, access platforms for a lot of new material. The question is, are they going to be able to crank out new material under these protocols? And they're trying, but um, I, you're very, very, you're very, very right about the future of movies. Uh, and you were right, you know, ten years ago when you said you preferred watching at home. It's, you know, it's just easier. Uh, does this mean we're going to end up like those humans in Wally, -E, you know, in our chairs and blobbed out, just mm -hmm. getting like yeah. information? It's already happening. Oh, yeah. Well, it's what they call the quarantine 15. That's the 15 pounds you gain just from being in quarantine. 
Right. You know. Um, well, I mean, it, it, it. to begin with, I think the movie theaters are the going to be the most heavily impacted at this right. point because uh, th they've been, by their very greed over the years, they have made themselves antiquated. In other words, when I started adding up, as you said, all the money it cost me to go to a movie with Marjorie, between the cab fare, the ticket prices, which are about $42 for two seniors watching a 3D film, okay? Ridiculous. The popcorn, which comes to at least $15, uh, and the box of popcorn, the box itself probably costs more than the popcorn to make, okay? Uh, outlandish prices that way. By the time I'm through, it cost me $75, $85 to just go see a movie, which then turns out to be crap. Well, you're not, you're not listening to my reviews. What, 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 you listen, you don't, mind, you don't mind taking a chance on a film for the whole family, four of you sitting there perhaps on the average, for 20 bucks, because if it's not any good, it's only 20 bucks. But if it's 100 bucks and it still stinks... You know, um, you, could, you could also at home turn it off, take a little time, go to the John, you know, yeah. just do whatever you need to do. But but the other thing that's happened is over the past 15 years, long form storytelling on television, particularly uh, as it relates to streaming services, has become phenomenal. We're in a golden age of video or a golden age of narrative storytelling when it comes to uh, serial uh, serial stories. You know, I don't so know if I necessarily agree with you on that. I think that if you go over to Netflix, you've got to weed through a lot of crap. Oh, yeah. Turkish soap operas, uh, you know, things like that. In fact, they have a whole category now there of Turkish TV. No. I, I mean, uh, yeah. I look, mean, you know, it, there's the, in order to get a lot of stuff on there, Netflix has backed any number of productions around the world that suck. You know, I found... You know, you, look, that's why I'm around. I watch as much as I can and talk about it, but be judicious, you know, and also the other thing about that is 20 minutes in, unless someone like me is saying, give it a couple episodes, and sometimes you really want people yeah, but, to give it a couple episodes, yeah. 20 minutes in, you generally know this is crap and you turn it off. But tell me you don't like to watch a two-hour film where the story is complete from beginning to end i do but i also when i come across something as profound uh, uh to use your word again uh as uh and as engaging as something like dark which is to me a high watermark in science fiction storytelling at least one of my favorite uh, I, don't, I don't even know of this show dark is the german science fiction show that is, in fact, it was, at first glance, kind of a German knockoff of Stranger Things. At first glance, meaning the first episode, it is in no way, shape, or form that knockoff of Stranger Things. It becomes something that is entirely uh, complex and wonderful. You have to actually, this is so stupid, you have to keep a concordance of characters. I mean, I'm not a dumb guy, and I'm, like, binging each season. But I, if I didn't have a concordance of characters to my... To, to you know something I could open up from Wikipedia, I would have been like, "Who the hell is that?" Because it's that complex, and I don't mean this to scare anyone away, but it's an amazing. It, it, you've already scared me away. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and when when we first started watching it, we watched it very much when it dropped initially about four years ago, the first season, and for some reason. I was with some friends and we had kind of a little TV club where we got together to watch television programs and, and uh, particularly British uh, procedurals and what have you. So we see this thing dark. We love Stranger Things. This is like right after Stranger Things first season. And they said, well, this is the German Stranger Things. And we were like, yeah, okay, well, we'll check it out. And so we began watching it and my friend refused to um, turn on the German the original German audio and instead use subtitles, uh, excuse me, used uh, dubbing. Yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 we got to watch it with subs. And it was a little disconcerting, you know, kind of like the Japanese monster. I'll movie. tell you, though, I got to tell you. Uh, Godzilla. When, when there's an argument about, we even watch uh, British shows now with subtitles. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. But uh, uh, the fact is that what, what I did with 
uh, Babylon Berlin, which was, a, you know, uh, I, you know, I watched it first with subtitles and I went, I don't know. It's it's just too much. To, it's going to begin with German as a terse language so that they go by faster. Okay. So I decided to just watch it with the with the uh, dub. And it was fine. It was good. I, I, the, the I won't dub, do it. I, I got into the plot. I understood it. You know, it was much clearer to me. Uh, because when you're spending so much time having to read subtitles, it takes you away from just what's happening on okay. the screen. Okay. So you will be one of those people I'll say, watch dark with the dub. But honestly, it is so good. And once yeah. you get into it, and again, it's a case well, where you're watching the first episode and you're going like, but there are yeah, things out there. Yeah, but this is not really the subject we're talking about. No, here. I'm just, yeah. but I'm just saying narrative television has exploded in a, yeah. <clears throat> a big way thanks to streaming services. And those streaming services are for you and a lot of other people the way they can watch a, a feature film. Yeah. I think, I think you're right on something, and it's something I've said, is people are getting used to watching their movies at home more than going to a theater. And because they've gotten used to that, they're probably never going back to the theaters. Okay? Uh, and the theaters, the theaters aren't going to open that fast. You know? I mean, of all the places you could go and get coronavirus, it's a movie theater. Well, it's the one place you can go and get the coronavirus while you're enjoying a big bag of popcorn. Yeah, yeah, perfect. yeah, and that, that but, makes it almost worth it. Almost. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, I am, you know, I'm reluctant uh, to be in crowds. Uh, much of my career has been spent in screening rooms and um, in movie theaters, and I continue to try to stay abreast of what's new in that regard and cover it, but it's kind of, it's it's crazy. I mean, even the screening rooms that I go to, they're they're not enormous, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. If it's a popular movie that people want to see, every seat is filled, and there's no way in hell I'm going to be sitting in a room full of breathers. You know, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. yeah. I, I won't do it. So not so so. It, for instance, let's take a company like Disney. Disney uh, has probably been the most hit of all the corporations in the country. Because they make movies indoors, uh, they uh, they do uh, 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 a lot of other things which have actually stifled their profits. They're, they're, theme parks. They're, they're making theme parks, movies, and so on. The only thing that's going good for them is Disney Plus, where they've got uh, I think it's I read 54 million subscribers so far. And that's given them some some income, but the rest of it is, you know. Now here's my my question to you. For instance, let's take one picture. The James Bond picture was changed from I think it was March when it was supposed to be released, and they said we're moving it to Thanksgiving, figuring the whole thing will be over by then. It's right. not going to be over by then. Okay? Probably not. No, but people are not going to feel comfortable going back to movies. Do you think they're going to take a chance on that one and put it in streaming? I really, <clears throat> the, the quote unquote James Bond experience is generally a widescreen immersive experience eh, because of all the visuals and all the set pieces mm -hmm. and all the action. People love to be in the middle of it. The sex scenes such as they are, I, they may push it. I, I think Wonder Woman 84 is, uh, I think it's already been pushed to spring, right? I don't know. I really don't know. Warner's has, Warner's has pushed that to, I think, next year. I could be wrong. Uh, they um, There's going to be a point where they have to basically do something. They can't just sit on these things over, I mean, the, the, the profit margins notwithstanding, they just can't sit on these things for very, uh, very long <clears throat> in terms of, of um, just economics. Shelf life and economics. The, the thing I see Disney doing is they're taking features and rather than putting them on streaming, they've actually put them on Disney Plus. I think Hamilton was supposed to be a theatrical release, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. Yeah, the whole opening and everything is a Disney opening and so on. Uh, there was another film of theirs that I, I uh, recently... Oh, Artemis Fowl. Well, Artemis Fowl will probably work better for them being on Disney Plus. There's one other film I'm trying to think of now where they also did it on... on uh, Disney Plus. So maybe a lot of Disney stuff 
is going to come out on Disney Plus. Uh, the question, Mulan, huh? Mulan has been held. They they were going to do. That's the one that was going to be before James Bond, and it never happened. And they yeah. kept moving yeah. forward. So it, it, it's a question of how long they're going to hold on to these films before they say we can't wait any longer. I mean, uh, they had a thing called the what Trolls? What was that movie? Trolls? Yeah, Trolls World Tour. World Tour. Uh, Second Trolls. They movie. went direct to streaming on that because they couldn't go into the theaters. They were going to open in the theaters, but they went to streaming. They said they wound up making more money in streaming than they would have ever made in the theaters. Well, that I, I don't know that that was an anomaly, but that was certainly a first in a lot of ways. Look, um, as you know, I work in the animation business, and I have, you know, I don't want to go into detail about it, but I have a, um, a deal with a major studio, and it was a, something that was optioned, and it doesn't require anybody to be on a set to make these things. Right. And they do have the the movie that was before it in the pipeline of this division of the of the studio's animation uh uh, division mm -hmm. uh, they've been they hope for a summer release starting in asia and i have been following the uh, you know imdb and the trades and it seems like they've pushed that to november and so that movie is now supposed to have an american release in november it's animated there are lots of video platforms depending upon the circumstances and considering that the family oriented trolls movie did so well mm -hmm. on I'm hoping, I don't care if it's in a movie theater or not, I just want it to get out there so they move on to the next project. Yeah. It's possible in November the movie ahead of the one that I've been involved with is going to get released and probably via streaming services. Well, let me ask you this, one last question before I let you go, uh, because we, we've talked about, we've gone longer than I expected we would, but the subject is one we could talk about for hours, you know. It's fruitful. Um, how, how has this affected you as a reviewer? Well, um, in, a, in a normal week, I see about seven movies. It's an average. Seven movies in a screening room or at a promoted screening in the evenings. Um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, AMC, Century City, or whatever. They have a really... It, we're very comfortable. Most of the reviewers are comfortable if it's not going to be oversold in terms of getting word of mouth people there. So seven movies. Now I'm watching everything on the laptop. And uh, they are giving us, and, and we're not seeing the blockbusters because the companies are holding back on them. One thing that's happening is I am uh, spending more time with independent and foreign films that I would have, than I would have spent. I, I mean, I cover that uh, much to your chagrin a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and nonetheless, um, you know, I'm getting some good stuff. And then there are movies that are mid-range. They're not going to be blockbusters, and they're just releasing them via streaming rather than putting them in theaters. So, you know, it, it's kind of skewing my my attention to more, yeah, I, I would say, smaller movies. And that's not a bad thing necessarily. But I miss the chance to see these other things and, and you know, be able to wax on, uh, you know, positive or negative on something that everybody wants to find out about well and, you're probably and, you're probably going to have to get yourself a big screen at home and and just get the theatrical experience going for you at home probably yeah. i mean that seems to be like a possibility because that's pretty much what i have here you know well of course you've been you've been living in your own uh, own you know home theater for a while which is something that you aspire to for the very reasons that you uh, elucidated earlier it's an expensive and oftentimes wasteful experience. Well, what we're, what we're seeing, let, let me let me just say this, I, and it's probably the best place to end this, is that I see the movie theater as a thing of the past. I see that in 10 years, we're going to remember it as a relic, and there's going to be a whole generation of kids growing up who never went to a movie theater. They will be getting their movies injected by yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, but, I, what I'm, but you get what I'm saying. I don't think we're right. ever going back to the way it was. And, and I think because of their lack of showmanship, their expensive prices and everything else, they deserve it. Well, I, yeah, I will. I'll miss the. I'll miss the shared experiences. As as I will it's... too. You know. You, you know. Ever since I was a kid, and eh, let's run over here. When, ever since I was a kid, I went to the movie theaters on Saturday with all the other kids, and we watched a, a serial, and we watched a cartoon, and then we watched a right. main feature, which was usually a western, uh, and. Uh, 
that the, the, the shared experience in a theater was something that was ingrained in me from birth, all right? So to see it go is a tragedy for me. But, mm. but the reason it's going is, number one, a pandemic. Number two, it's the movie business itself. The way in which the distribution is done, the way in which the showmanship is. There's no showmanship anymore. They don't care if, the, if what's up on the screen doesn't even look good and is dim. And they're, well, they're charging you for that, you know? So they, a, deserve, is, they deserve what they get. This is a good point because uh, my colleagues uh, and I will go to a screening. You know, my buddy Alan, mm -hmm. uh, he I will go to screenings in San Francisco because I'm there part of the time. And, um, you know, we always know if it's going to be held, if it's a, 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 if it's a theatrical presentation as opposed to a screening room, we know that if it's at a certain theater, it's going to be poorly projected, and it happens. Well, I'm, I, I, I tell the classic story about the time that I went to see a movie, and I love my 3D, and I went in, and the movie started, and it wasn't in 3D. Everybody had their glasses on thinking it was in 3D, but it wasn't. And I went to the, uh, the manager, and he came up and looked and go, went, yeah, I guess we're projecting the straight version of it. He said, uh, hmm, well, we can't do anything about that. You want your money back? I said, you want to give me my cab fare? Do you want to pay for my popcorn? Do you, you know, all the other ancillary things. So that's what I'm talking about. Showmanship. Okay? Well, and, and, know, and they don't care about showmanship because the guy running the theater used to be a plumber. You, you, you would know. think, you know, and, the, and then they have automatic circumstances in some theaters, too, the way they just trigger something and, and there you go, and particularly with digital presentations. Look. You know, you would think that if you're going to have reviewers seeing something, mm -hmm. that you have to give them the absolute blue ribbon presentation. And frequently at those theaters, particularly, uh, like I said, a handful of them in San Francisco, a, a couple, uh, it, it's been hit or miss. And it even happens in Los Angeles, too, the, the home of the movie industry. So there you have it. Yeah. You right we'll see hey listen uh, we've run out of time but i i want to i want to do this again soon because it, right. it, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to cover and uh, in a pandemic like this how we get our entertainment is very very important so thank you michael talk to you soon ladies and gentlemen you that's bet. michael snyder by the way you can hear him on uh, every every so often because during the pandemic we haven't done it every week uh, when he runs movie reviews here on uh, on, uh, on on GabNet. Thank you, Michael. And you can hmm? check me out on Twitter at Culture Blaster. Okay, and you can, uh, yeah, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Michael. Appreciate it. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hope you found that interesting. I uh, uh, I was uh, I, I, I asked him last week if he'd sit down with us and do that, and we'll probably have another discussion about it sometime soon because it really, really is uh, very much what's happening today and the way in which I think the movie business has been just completely slaughtered by all of this and where it's going to wind up and how it's going to manifest itself and so on. Since we talked... Uh, Disney has said that they are going to take uh, Mulan, which was mentioned in that discussion, and Mulan is going to be shown on Disney Plus. But if you got Disney Plus, you're going, oh, I get to see Mulan. Then no, you're going to have to pay 29 bucks on Disney Plus to see it. It's going to be what they call a special release, which pisses me off because I subscribe to Disney Plus, and I think if you're going to do something like that, do it somewhere else. You know, uh, put it on pay systems and things like that. Don't uh, don't screw up Disney Plus and say, well, you know, you get everything on Disney Plus for, you know, five ninety five a month. Oh, that's great, but you don't get Mulan. Eh, fuck you, fuck you. Anyway, let me uh, let me um, let me see here. I have some people to admit to our uh, our program here, and uh, let's see here if they're. Uh, let me uh, go here to, there we go, and here they are. Hello, everybody. Hello, Howard in Hawaii, and hello, Charlie in Texas. Hey. Yeah, and uh, hello, me. Yeah, 
Anyway, uh, so um, let me see here. Uh, we only have the two of you right now, and uh, Howard doesn't have his oh. mic on, so, you know. Oh, I just got to stick my finger on it. You got to stick your finger on it? That sounds positively obscene, uh, Howard. <laughs> I used hand sanitizer. Yeah? Okay, good, cool. Oh, man. Oh, I'm trying to... Today, I'm just... I don't know. Some days, I'm great, and other days, I feel tired, and today's one of those days I feel tired, but if we can get a decent citizen panel going here, I suppose we can... Energy you know, up! Get my energy up. Uh, but That's so right. far, it's just you two guys, you know? Wow. How's That's everything in Texas out. there, Charlie? <clears throat> well, I know. It's, we're still here. Want me to make you jealous about something? Sure. The last three days, we have not had a single death in New York City. Wow. Not a single death in New York City. Wow. And something like uh, yesterday, it was like three deaths in New York State. So, uh, but th three days in a row without a death in New York City from COVID. Oh. That's, uh, That's a good job. Yeah, good job. Yeah. I, we, I, how's it doing in Texas? Um, it slowed down a little bit. We only had 9,000 cases today and uh, 245 deaths. So. Oh, really? Wow. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> and our president says things are getting better in those states. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah well, from, uh, how do you judge that, you know? Uh, here, here, let's see here. Okay, here we go. Rob Alfano. And then it says Perky Pat. Now, who is Perky Pat? Been Hi, John. I bet it was John. I bet it's John Larkin. Of course, yep. it's John Larkin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Perky. Aloha, Pat. brothers. Perky Pat. Hi, John. I bet it was John. I bet it's John Larkin. Of course, that's John. Larkin. Turn down your. Uh, turn down your. Uh, uh, the uh, you know, whatever that is we're doing there. The, the show. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Yes. I heard Amazon is going to buy um, AMC. Really? Yeah. Why? Because because they can afford it. They can take a loss on the theaters, you know. They yeah. just take the movies and put them in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, I guess, but uh, they were going to buy which one? AMC. AMC. They're bankrupt. I, I just don't. Yeah, I guess you can buy them for a song. Yeah, you know, doesn't sound like you, a good You know, the investment. movie, the movie, uh, the the um, the movie theater business has been really hard for the last twenty years because they don't make any money on those movies. They have to pay so much to get those movies in there. The only way they make any money is by charging, selling popcorn. Oh no, yeah, no, no here, stands. Here's huh? how here's how it works. Here's how it works. They do make money off those movies, but only if they're there for a couple of weeks. The first week, they don't make a penny. Oh, yeah. All the money, all the receipts go to the movie company. Second week, it's like, I don't know, five, 2 percent or something like that. And it keeps getting larger as it stays in the theater. So uh, the reason you pay so much for popcorn is that is yeah. the way they make their money. Yeah. You know. My friend's fiance worked for the concession stands in South San Francisco, and they make so much bank. They do make so much bank? Yeah. Well, I mean, come on. You got a box yeah. of popcorn. Costs you 15 bucks, okay? Yeah. The box costs more, right, <laughs> than the popcorn itself. So you go figure. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, and I don't know. I've always been a sucker for that. You know, by the way, here's the thing that always bothered me. Try bringing in your own popcorn. Oh, no. Oh, no. They won't allow that, right? You leave your popcorn out. You know what I mean? So I can eat that stuff with Pennzoil? That, you know, <laughs> that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, that glutinous stuff that's on there? Are you out of your mind? You know, so. I, uh, I, that kind of. All those trans fats? Yeah. Yeah. Yummy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, yeah. you know. Gee, I, where's where's Robert tonight? Uh, Robert wasn't with us yesterday either when we did our four o'clock show, and he usually calls that. I don't know what happened to him. Well, maybe he's hanging out with Phil. Maybe he's hanging maybe out. Phil with took Phil. him out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't see Phil anywhere here now. You know. So. Yeah. 
So you're doing that four o'clock on Mondays every week now, huh? Yeah, I've been doing it every week. Uh, it's a nice little show, you know. It's it's a friendly bunch of people not yelling at each other. Um, some people think it's a better show than this one. I I don't know this, but this is a different animal. At least when certain people get involved in it, you know. So <laughs> like you and Shaq, like you Monday. and Shaq. Hmm? What'd you say? Oh, you were there yesterday, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, you and Shecky are on there, so it's pretty cool to hear the stories back and forth, you know. So yeah. I mean, I loved Letterman. I used to record Letterman and Carson, and then I'd watch them on the next day. Yeah. And uh, so I, I loved all that humor, all yep. that really quick humor. Like you guys said, that sort of went over and over and over. But the top ten and all his little stupid stuff was so yeah, funny. Yeah, well, I, you know, the funny thing is that, you know, Shecky worked for him for, well, for the whole time uh, that he was at NBC, except for the first month or so, month, two months or so. And then after that, uh, here comes Phil. Um, uh, after that, uh, he uh, went with him to CBS and stayed with him through the entire CBS thing. I think in the end, Shecky was the third longest person on the staff at the very end. Um, and uh, so he knows where a lot of the bodies are buried. And you know, yesterday he told a couple of stories, and then later on he wrote me and said. I didn't realize this was actually going to be on later as well. You know, the, it goes up on Facebook and then it stays there. Oh. And, well. and he said, but I don't care. <laughs> you know? all, all 20 people watching it. Yeah, all 20 people. Well, <laughs> now, actually, that show gets more people watching it than this one. Hmm. That one, when I'm through, gets a cu at least a couple of hundred people watching it. Really? Maybe yeah. the timing or something. Yeah, huh? and then by the end of the week, it's got like five, six hundred people that watch it, as opposed to any one of these shows. So, you know, uh, it, it's made me rethink a few things. One of the things is uh, the uh, the amount of people that watch it on Facebook as opposed to YouTube. I mean, that's kind of strange, you know. And I, you know, it's kind of made me uh, think about rethink this whole thing. You know, when we started this with the Citizen Panel. Um, uh, the whole concept was rather original, right? Uh, and uh, to pull it off, what it was is I, you know, I said, how are we going to get phone callers? And as uh, Rob knows, if you wanted to get phone callers in those days, you had to phone up the phone company and they put in four lines, right? Right, Rob? And yep, it co that's right. cost you a goddamn fortune. So I said, well, wait a minute, they got this thing called Skype. What if I use Skype? And then I went, well, you know, Skype, I can have more than one person on at a time. So that's how I came up with the citizen panel. You know, it just seemed like a natural kind of thing. And it was different to have a bunch of people calling a talk show and all discussing it with each other than one person talking to the host and yelling at each other and then going to the next caller and talking to each other and having it be one-on-one. -on -one. So it was a rather original idea. But now with Zoom, everybody's doing it. You know, and, and so I wonder if I have any relevancy in the current new normal. You know, so I wonder about it. You were the innovator again. I, I was the innovator. Bill, what do you think? Uh, what do I think about what? I guess Phil is too many days into his, uh, into <laughs> his uh, hormones. Uh, no, nah, I, I, I don't feel good. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just figured I'd, you know, come on. But uh, well, what, well, how don't you feel good? Uh, I really overdid it on Sunday uh, shooting, and uh, I've been sleeping uh, all, you know, all I can do. And my left hand is killing me. It feels like I got arthritis in my in a couple of my fingers. And you got that oh. from shooting the gun? Um, I can't have, you know. What do you mean? Uh, you, what do you mean you can't have? Well, you know, it was an intense day of training, but I only shot 45 rounds of 12-gauge slugs, which, you know, but it was hot out. It was 100 degrees. I was, you know, uh, I'm tired. That's Maybe it's uh, the uh, radiation catching up with me. Or the female hormones. Yeah, or, you know. Hey, that they gave me, uh, what is it, three months ago? So, um, you know, there hasn't been... 
uh, there hasn't been much of a change, although I did buy a purse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's called a man Carry, bag. Carrying your guns in your purse now. No, right? no, it's, it's a man bag. I, I decided that I uh, needed to test uh, the diabetes stuff more often, so I needed something to carry it in. And uh, so I put the wallet yeah, in there. Yeah, that's the excuse, Will. Yeah, the wallet. That's the keys, I, need, I needed a wallet. I needed a, a, a lipstick. Yeah, lipstick. Yeah, 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 lipstick. Why is it pink, though? Yeah, <laughs> this way I'm not uh, putting it in my back pocket, and uh, I think it's better for you. Really? Yeah. Huh. Is it leopard uh, skin? Uh, no, it's uh, it's called a it's a brand called Nutsack. Uh, but <laughs> you, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That'll yeah. go good with a kilt. But, I got uh, your nutsack right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you, you have a choice on the logo just to get the acorn or the word nutsack under the acorn. I, I chose just the acorn. Oh, really? Yeah. You didn't want the word nutsack on your on your man purse? And no, I did not. But no. uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's uh, it's fairly masculine. I had a man purse back in the seventies. It was the most convenient thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, my apartment fanny pack, too. Hmm? a fanny pack. Uh, well, I had a fanny pack, but it was to carry a thirty-eight caliber Smith and Wesson. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> it, it was specially set up, you know. Uh, but you know, the eighties are over. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute! Here, here comes Brian Ludwig. Hold on a second. Here we go. Brian uh, back. Huh? Yeah, Brian's back. Hello, Brian. What is that you're wearing on your head? We can't see it because you've got that lamp in back of you, and it's uh, causing the light to kind of diminish. Let's see if this helps. Oh, well, that's probably not the idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what is that? What, what is that hat? Oh, oh, there we go. Uh, just, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I bought two of these uh, at a CVS. Wrap around face masks, but I also found they make for great uh, ways to uh, keep the hair out of your eyes. What do you mean they wrap around face masks? I don't <laughs> get inner. that. Exactly. Yeah, yes, the that's like the that. best oh, kind of face oh, mask. They oh, really, see. they're more comfortable. Are they, they are really? Good. What you get better breathing out of them? I think so. Okay. I have a couple of cloth ones, and they're much better. I got I also. Bought, I also bought two like summer caliber cloth. Uh, uh, breathable uh, bell- black balaclavas from uh, Amazon that basically do the same thing, only they're interconnected. Yeah, I uh, uh, I got Marjorie one, and it was so so stifling on her that on a hot day she, it just became sopping wet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have one kind of similar to it, but it has breathing holes, and uh, it seems to not have the same problem, you know. So, but Alex, I was saying, I was just saying, uh, channeling my inner Phil here with a bad joke here. Uh, could uh, one of those face masks I bought from uh, Amazon? You could wear one and commit a crime. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's I mean, that's, that, 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 wonderful. You know, uh, but now I think all the uh, all the people who are going to rob people uh, don't wear masks. I think that's what they do. It's a, it's a whole new. This is the new normal. Here we're sitting around. What kind of mask do you use? Well, I got this one that was gingham, you know, and it had a kind of had funny face on it. Yes, Charlie. Uh, Zim in the chat room says that Brian's um, mask looks like a do-rag. Well, it looks it like a do-rag when you're wearing it like that, but then when you put it down across the front of you, you look like you're really robbing a bank. You look something like out of a uh, uh, one of those movies about robbing banks. So, you know. What the hell? But uh, anyway, it's it's kind of a kind of a qui- quiet night tonight. Uh, I don't know where Robert is. I don't know where some of the other people are. But the other night, I was I'm just spoiled because we had thir- we had 15 we people had the bunch, other night. Yeah. Was it 15 we had? Yeah. I think it's 15. Yeah. 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 So I was I'm really spoiled by that. So if I get anything less, I think I'm a failure. But uh, but as I'm saying, you know, the whole idea of the citizen panel has been upstaged by the fact that everybody's Zooming now. Everybody's doing citizen panels. And even the shows that are doing callers and things like that are doing what we're doing now. You I know. guess much like Howard Stern's uh, talk show format, this too has been uh, adopted without due credit. Huh? 
Yeah, yeah. they stole yeah, it from it. you. Yeah, yeah. We well. Get some celebrity guests. Yeah. Bill, can you get Trump? Yeah. What? We need some celebrity guests. I was wondering if Phil could get Trump. Yeah, get Trump, yeah. Did you see him on Axios, by the way? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I felt, did you feel sorry for that interviewer? I mean, he couldn't get a straight answer out of Trump, and Trump, when he'd ask a question, would start, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, he would just talk on and on with a run-on sentence, uh, trying not trying to run out the clock. As Bill, look at the charts. Look uh, at the charts. Yeah, look, look at the, the charts. charts. But uh, trying to run out the clock, and this guy couldn't, you know, he would start asking a question, and then Trump would just interrupt with his answer before the guy could even finish with the question. Is this after, the one that was on HBO? And after it was over, as somebody who does interviews, I just felt so bad for the guy. I mean, you know, he did a great job. You know, yeah, he I tried his bad. best. But it was still, it was, uh, it was pretty terrible, you know. I think he, he stood up to him a little bit, though. I mean, he wasn't just letting them blow over these details. He went back and forth at him saying, well, why are you looking at cases per, or, you know, deaths per case? I'm looking at deaths per population, you know. And then he didn't really have an answer for that. He said, oh, yeah, but look at this chart. Look, yeah, look then this he one. had these pieces of paper. Look at these eye pieces <laughs> of paper. He didn't even know how to read them. Know. You know, he didn't know what they contained. And it was, uh, <laughs> but it was just a very, I would not want to interview Trump. It would just be too frustrating, you know. So his answers were queerer than my sex life, huh? Huh? They and were, I said, so his answers were queerer than my sex life. Huh? Yes, yes. Uh, but, I, I, yeah, I just was amazed by it. And then uh, he, he got him on a couple of things. He got him to uh, go after John Lewis. Yeah. Uh, which was not a good idea. You know, if you're trying to get the black vote in this country, I don't think you go after John Lewis. It's not a good okay. idea. But I didn't like John Lewis because he didn't show up to my State of the Union or my inauguration. <laughs> yeah. is, is it all about him? It's all about Trump. Yeah, yeah. That's and he says he's done more for the black people than almost everybody, maybe Abraham Lincoln. Now, now like, Phil, what about the civil rights? <laughs> oh my God. Phil, I want to prove to you something uh, here that oh. Trump is stupid. Oh. He's he's a moron, basically. Yesterday, he's good at one. He's good at one thing. He's good at one thing. What? Uh, advertising his divisiveness and projecting it on yeah, other but, people. Yeah, but he yesterday mentioned a California national park. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, he did. Oh, Where God. is Yosemite? Oh, no, no, no. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, two or three times. No. Yosemite? <laughs> Where Yosemite. Is, he said Yosemite. It was a Yosemite. Yeah. Yosemite. Yeah. It sounded like Cuomo was saying his Jewish friends or something. He said, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yosemite. How, how did that Semite. come up? It's a Jewish I, know, I don't know. He was mentioning things, and, you know, I can't remember what. And he, in this in this uh, dialogue, uh, said the Yosemite. Yosemite. Now, I, you, know, Semite, you yeah. don't live in California, do you? Rob, I semi. Yosemite. You don't live in California, <laughs> Charlie. We uh, uh, Well, Brian does. Tony. T uh, Tony doesn't. But you know it's Yosemite, don't you? Yosemite. I see Sam. Yogi Bear. Yosemite. <laughs> Yosemite. You Yosemite Sam, time. right? Yogi and Boo Boo. <laughs> what? Yosemite. I remember. I know. I can remember <laughs> when everybody used to call it Yosemite just for kidding around, though. You go into Yosem Yosemite. But oh yeah, I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he uh, said wow. he said he called it Yos Yosemite. Yeah, he called it Yosemite. Yeah, yeah. Yosemite. Yosemite. Yes. Yosemite. That was it. Yosemite. It's the Yosemite. California version of Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there any question that he did the brother version? Yo, Semite. <laughs> is there any wow. question he did not take the SAT? There is no question. There's no question. Is right. After, the yeah. only he would get right is signing his name for 200 points. That's it. He does a good job of it. He's yeah. got a pretty neat looking signature. Well, he made on that. Actually, That's what he did. You know how girls in, in school write their boyfriend's name, you know, their first and they Well, I want to know what the difference is. I want to know what the difference is between his signature and an EKG. <laughs> <laughs> signature is certified. 
huh? you know, uh, certified. There are people that have certified signatures. And really? Certified signature for a yeah. certifiable person. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you mean a certified <laughs> signature, I Phil? I never uh, heard of that. Like a bank uh, VP or a manager has a certified yeah. signature. Uh, Trump signature is certified. Too. You know, it's, uh, important. it's like a registered signature. Well, but uh, what happens when you get older? Because I know that as I've gotten older, I've gone from spelling my name to yeah. scratch. Scribbling. as just an yeah, absolute scratch. Um, because they don't care what it looks like on the credit card slip. No, but I mean, I, I has, as time has gone on, I mean, I've got a rather unwieldy name, and I, I can do kind of Bennett, okay? But then when I get to the Schwarzman, by the time I get to the past the Z, it just becomes a line, you know? The older you get, the shorter your time is. You don't want to spend that much time writing the rest of the name. <laughs> well, I think part of it is, how often do you write your name these days? Yeah, not much. Yeah, you know, not, in the not, old days, credit cards, uh, credit cards, and not really. Uh, everything's touchless. No. everything's digital signature. Yeah, it's got. Yeah, to I use my I use my Apple wallet, and I don't. Uh, uh, I'm shocked touchless. when they ask me to sign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that DocuSign thing. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking That's about getting that for clients. So that when you send them something. You, they don't have to fax it back to you or email it back to you. Yeah, that <laughs> works great. Used it when I bought the house. The yeah. last two houses, all DocuSign. What's yeah. the, what's Howard Doc? Did, did, what's did DocuSign? You, sign? It's all you. Oh. you know, I you you go through all these contracts and everything, closing and everything you do with the lawyer stuff and everything. You do it via DocuSign. They send you an email. Mm -hmm. You click on this link. It opens it up. They you get a password. You create an account, and then you can sign documents electronically yeah. through DocuSign. Okay, so you don't have to sign your signature. You just simply approve. There's a signature. That's for you. Yeah, you have the option. You can pick a signature for you or make your own. Yeah. Right. It's legally binding because you go through a identification. Well, process. I right. found that on some things where I needed to legally bind, but I had to do it online. All I had to do was print my name. And that yeah. was considered yeah. a signature. Uh, you do once with DocuSign and then you have initials also. Yeah. But it takes you from field to field. And all you do is click on it. It's very easy. Yeah, it's really? great. I just renewed and my lease. And it's a legal binding signature. And your customers have those forever. Like, all, if I can go back and log into DocuSign and see all my documents all in that one place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Well. I just I, Someday Yeah, you the sign up for the service. I don't know what it costs. I haven't signed up for it yet. But, uh uh i'm not that thinking, expensive yeah i'm thinking that's the way to go yeah yeah um but uh i wonder where robert is tonight because uh he wasn't on the on the monday show either so i hope he's okay whenever Phil, when, what did you do with him whenever that happens i worry about people when phil doesn't call i worry about him i yeah. always tell you but uh with robert i think it was a drive-by shooting you know he does live in new jersey yeah yeah well, i mean well, jersey got hit bad alex they might have lost power listen you know a lot of times i don't i don't know he could have lost power but that wasn't yesterday though it, it, you know i just in this coronavirus environment uh when you don't hear from somebody you begin to worry you know yeah. because anything's possible uh what is this, Phil, that you put in your hand up? Ten. Ten? Do I have ten? No, I don't have ten. Do I? Already? Yeah. Boy, this is a... So what is that? Is that a... Uh, uh, full house. Full it's house. a full house? Okay. So let me go... Uh, let me see here. Go to my Zoom panel. Go to my full house. Do a little transition and... There you go, folks. You got your full house because Patrick joined us. You got your full uh, house. But anyway, so you worry about people because who knows what happens, you know? All of a sudden you can get sick and then you don't hear from them. Uh, so every now and then when I don't hear from somebody for a couple of days, even on this panel, I get a hold of them and say, are you okay? We haven't heard from you in a while. Look at, look yeah. at John Rockwell. Yeah. 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 Right, That's exactly, right. Mm -hmm. exactly. So I worry yeah. about it. So, Robert, if you're out there, uh, I, I'm, worrying, we, I'm worrying about you, okay? Um, but, uh, you know, you want to you wanna hear what happened here in New York? Three days in a row, no deaths in New York. 
city. New York, New York City. Oh, state? New York City. I don't know about the state. They, I didn't see they what... They had the, two over the Sunday. I know that, I think. Yeah, something like three, something like that. But for three straight days, no deaths in New York City. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Not from COVID, anyway. Not from COVID. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how many people got shot, but, you know, I mean... Murders, uh, you don't count that. Uh, I mean, when you compare that to the 800 a day, you know, it's, it's, it's like night and day. But now we're scared the crap out of us that people are going to come in from out of state. They're going to go, oh, it's safe in New York. Let's go there. I know my state's on the do you not fly list. list. Oh, yeah. I, I, my, made our list now, I call to go list. see my mother, I was told I can't. Because I have to quarantine for two weeks. Yeah. Well, what you could do is go over to your mother's house, stay there, and yeah. then then two leave weeks. and go back to Virginia, right? For two weeks. Well, we don't want you bringing your cooties with you. <laughs> Bring you the know. studio with you. Hey, listen. Yeah. It's somehow this has got to. Something's got to happen here to make things better, and it isn't going to happen until people start realizing that the selfishness we engaged in in the past, we can't engage in now, you know? And that it, 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 people are saying in those states like yours, Charlie, that are so terrible, a complete, <coughs> utter lockdown is the only thing that's going to just yeah. nip this thing in the butt. Uh, and I wish it weren't that way, but that's the, that's the only answer we have right now. We don't have a vaccine. You know. Now, of course, we all the uh, CARES Act stuff ran out. So, if we did lock down, people would just go bankrupt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a terrible th it's a terrible thing all the way around. But I think you know what I what I said that the uh, uh, the the biggest enabler of COVID is capitalism. Uh, you know, is because capital you. yeah because capitalism is what has gotten us into this situation because this whole thing about saying, well, we've got to open up the economy. We can't have the economy not open. Well, wait a minute. You know, I mean, it's that or dead people. Well, we, we have to open the economy. And I don't know that, that I want to make that choice. You know, uh, we'll, we'll get back to having an economy later. Okay. Let's take care of the situation now. Yes. Uh, Brian. The oh, other Brian. Cool, the other Brian. Yes, bro. me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just call me Ludwig, man. Just to avoid confusion. Call you what? You can do Ludwig, my. Yeah, last I can name. just call you Ludwig. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, that works. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, one, I agree with you. In fact, I've coined my own phrase. Uh, I call it crapitalism. Uh, two, uh, this virus. I think I said it before when I was on your program last week. Uh, this virus serves as a ringing endorsement for socialism. And uh, three, my understanding is uh, the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, they're advocating for another shutdown to prevent an economic crash in their rationale. If, if I might have that wrong, but I thought I, I, thought I uh, read that in the headlines. Well, you know, the reason why everybody went back to work again in some of those states was because we don't want the economy to fail, but they didn't realize that by not taking care of the COVID, you cause an even worse problem. And then when you have to close everything down again, you make the economy even worse. I mean, what's happened here in New York State is that we've had a phased reopening, very slow, very methodical, based on the science and upon the numbers, okay? And uh, the governor even said, we fully expected, and I was told by the best minds, that when we finally le lessen up and go into phase one, phase two, phase three, you can expect the figures to tick upward. He said, we didn't expect to happen what's happening now. The amount of people in hospitals is at its all time low. Intubations is at an all time low. I mean, all these things they didn't think would happen are happening. Uh, Marjorie and I, we went out for our first, to our first restaurant uh, the other night, uh, for the first time in six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were sitting out, you know, it was outside, you know, and it was, uh, the tables were separate from each other and so on. 
Uh, there's no indoor dining allowed. And it worked, it worked out pretty well, you know. Uh, I, I don't have COVID yet, you know. And I feel... What did you have for dinner? Uh, COVID. Mm. No. Uh, uh, what did we have for dinner? I had a, uh, I had a steak, I think. You know, my, my usual. But it was a local restaurant that we really love. And we, we want to support <laughs> them because we want them to stay open. And we asked them how it's going. And it turns out, he says, we're doing okay because we started delivering food to uh, various places that need food and need food service. So we were able to keep alive doing that as a business. He said, now that we're open, so many restaurants have closed down in New York. He said, I have a world famous chef working my kitchen now. Somebody who didn't have a, 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 a gig anymore because their restaurant, which is one of the biggest restaurants and best restaurants, a three Michelin star restaurant had to close down. You know, so he said, I got them and I got a pastry chef from another place. He said, so actually, the COVID thing has been okay for us. We've survived it nicely. And you go down the street and all these restaurants have their, their eating outside. And also they have places for you to eat that's out in the, in the parking spot in front of their, their place. And it kind of, it's a whole new atmosphere out there. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of nice. You know? Yeah, we, we've been providing lunches since day one of everything going crazy. So we've had a couple of restaurants that we've kept going also with a couple other businesses around us. But we're still, I think, until the end of this month now, they keep extending it every month. Mm -hmm. But I know we've helped them out a lot by taking care of our people. And now our people don't have to go out, especially people who go out for lunch. So Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, um, um, but it, it's, um, you know, we're hoping that it's going to be okay, you know, and that, uh, and a lot of these businesses are, are surviving, you know, we, we, we didn't count too many of them going out of business. I think one was turned into a UPS store, but that was about it, you know, and it may have been something else before. A restaurant, yeah. Patrick, are restaurants closing down a lot in your area? Are they surviving or what's happening? Um, about 50-50. Yeah, because Wisconsin's had a tick upward, right? <coughs> no? No. I thought... No, I mean, there, there, there have been more cases, but there haven't been any more hospitalizations of any significance yeah uh, right right now we have right around 300 people in the hospital mm -hmm. and of those maybe 70 in the icu mm -hmm. so i mean and that's statewide that's not just yeah. in my city so there's really nothing going on here um we have a mandatory mask order statewide which is horse shit but um you know that that's what you get when you have so a number of temporary, uh, fucking governor. So you know. Well, uh, you know when you say you had something like three hundred, what three hundred and fifty people hospitalized in your state, in our entire state now it's down to something like five fifty, maybe less than that, five twenty five. So um, and this is in New York State. You got talking about a population of eighteen million, I think. You know, so, uh, but it's 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 been uh, it's you know, it's okay, it's okay, you know. But I I admit that Wisconsin. I don't. I wonder if is Wisconsin. Anybody knows Wisconsin on our do not fly list? Um, here in New York, boy, Phil looks out of it tonight. You really are. Yeah, you're feeling bad. Yeah, you. I, yeah, I'm just listening. You shouldn't. But you want you, me to talk? You'll call me. You shouldn't go out shooting. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this was um, uh, it was good training. And, For what? Uh, oh yeah, of course. All those people are rioting in the streets, right? I forgot. Yeah. You got to yeah, be ready for that. People want to, you know, uh, go in and shoot up uh, synagogues. That's what it's for. Oh, I see. Okay. How, ma how many? How many shooting up of synagogues are there in lately? Uh, well, Pittsburgh was a good one. When was that? Uh, last year? Well, last year, but I'm saying recently. 
October right. of So you mean anti-Semitism is going away? Oh, okay. I, I don't well, I, I always mm-hmm. had an attitude about it. Being a Jew, I always had an attitude about anti-Semitism. It's going on too. Which years. was, what the fuck are we doing that's pissing everybody off? There must be something we're doing, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I feel, we're, we're winning Nobel P, uh, prizes for medicine and science. Uh, you know, we're doing we're, we're contributing so much to the world that they are really pissed off. Yeah, well, I have a you feeling. Phil, Lord and Savior, I, I've had a theory, I've had a theory, Phil, that if Hitler had met you uh, before all the other Jews, he would have been satisfied and not done any of the other stuff. You know. you know, they're never satisfied <laughs> because if he if he if he met me, he'd be coming for you next. Yeah. Uh, yes. Of yeah. uh, uh, Brian Ludwig. 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 Yeah. That's, you- yeah. Two things. One is that happened. Next. It'll be two years in October that that uh, uh, synagogue shooting occurred here yeah. in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And the other the other thing is uh, regarding Hitler. I think I've said this before you, um, months or uh, a few years ago. Uh, that he targeted the wrong groups of people. If instead he, if instead he targeted and decided to uh, put in concentration camps people like yuppies and douchebags and arrogant assholes and you know, you know, valley girls and like that, uh, not only would I have given him my full undivided support, I would have also bought, gone to Lowe's and Home Depot and bought him the building materials to build safe concentration camps with, because I would be fully on board with that kind of uh, persecution. <laughs> okay. Well, I think the line I was looking for was that if Hitler had met Phil, he would have been happy and stopped there. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that was my. Well, I just think he he targeted the wrong groups of people. Well, I you know, <laughs> mass extinction is not my idea of anything right under any circumstances, even if they're conservatives and uh, uh, not not really conservatives, but uh, uh, white power people. You know. Uh. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it, let's see here. I guess, Rob, in your area, it's <clears throat> nothing much to speak of, although has there been an uptick where you are? Not in my – that's the thing, right? They generalize – Virginia is a big state. Yeah. And, you know, there are counties where it's going up like crazy. My whole county has only had, since the beginning, 600 people. Okay. All right. Now, and here in this town, I think we've got 70 or something in the – the entire uh, count, a uh, city of, uh, I mean, and that's total. That's not now. Yeah. So it's so not. Play, I mean, they're all opinions on the schools. I don't know if you guys ever talked about that. Well, we talked about the school thing, but you know, uh, the only person here, I think, who has a kid. Well, there are two people that have kids. Uh, uh, Kevin, who is down at the bottom there, and is sporting a red face today, which means he was out in the sun again. Mm. Were you? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and mm. uh, and and uh, Brian, uh, and so uh, the rest of us are not, you know, that concerned about it. Although I'm concerned about it from the standpoint that if we want to get this thing over and done with, I don't know that opening up the schools is a particularly good idea. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that. We we picked up materials today. Uh, so they're doing everything from home. So Mondays and Mondays, they go on each class. They check in. And then uh, Tuesday and Thursday is three classes. And then the other three are Wednesday and Friday. So they're going to do that at least through till January. So. Now, what happens to kids and families who don't have Internet access? I mean, I was surprised oh. to hear this, but there is a huge portion of this oh. country that does not have Internet access. Yeah, I know, I know they, have, hmm? they have a technology. Um, so right when we pulled up, mm-hmm. they, they had a survey like a month ago if you need computers. I don't know how they're doing like internet, but the computer laptops, then when we went there to get them today, you either go one way to get a laptop or you go straight to go get their schedules. And they took, they took uh, pictures today also because they don't know if they're coming back. So they did the yearbook pictures today. So, oh, wow. <laughs> we have a big uh, issue yeah. with uh, rural no. areas out here really yeah but then i saw on facebook like in they had a place in georgia where they showed day one of class and they showed the hallway packed and you see you know like four or five kids with masks and then the other kids nobody has masks well i'm trying to remember they had this thing on cbs sunday morning this week about the internet and how many people have the internet and i can't remember the figure now 
but it was some yeah. amazing amount of people do not have just i'm not talking about low internet access i'm not talking about dial right. up they're not even up to the level of bubbles they just don't have right. internet access so right. many times those are homes that are in rural areas that they just don't ever get it there you know so what if they're low income housing too where the kids need the education more too yeah and you know i mean that's the sad part and then you have these kids that are just going to get pushed down and down further so what they're doing here Tur turn your mic up a little bit will you uh because uh, you're uh, you're not yeah. hearing me okay i'm not hearing you okay your your level's a little on the low side okay well i'll talk a little closer I'll, let me switch mics here i think he sw um, switched what they're the doing here yeah. yeah is uh they're putting uh hot spots on buses and taking the buses out to those areas mm -hmm. and parking the buses in the areas for eight hours at a time and then the parents or whatever are taking them down to the parking lots and letting them hook up that way yeah that's one way terrible and uh, uh yeah that's uh, that's in the chromebooks and that sort of thing yeah there was a there was a company that was uh, are you there brie by the way brie i don't know what the way yeah we, we i am here oh you are there okay we don't have a picture on you was the reason that i was ah there we go okay now i can go Jackpot. Uh, um, what is that? 4G. What is the picture? Those are the kids in, uh, they have some place in Georgia. They're showing, you can see a couple kids with masks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, boy. And oh, they're, boy. they're just, they're just, they, they're, they don't think they're going to get it. You, know? you don't have kids, do you, Bree? <clears throat> you do? I do. Yeah. Would you send your kid to school right now? right now? She's in school right now. She goes to physically to school? Twice a week, yes. How do you feel about that? Fine. How, really? Yep. You don't feel apprehensive about her being? No. Oh, they have masks on it in the classes and everything? They do. They have social distancing. Uh huh. She wears a mask and um, they have to do temperature checks three, three times. And um, they, and it's very, not everybody goes, so it's like 30% at a time or something. So uh, I think it's fine and not that. And also, um, we live right next to the medical center, and uh, I got, I think I got good coverage, mm -hmm. so we'll be okay. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that, that for instance, we're, we're not we're not as worried about the kids dying of this. Uh, they could get the flu, they could come down with it, but it's that. The parents and the grandparents and the people who live in the house might come down with this, and that's what we're worried about. Yeah, and, you know, and the yeah. right wingers never bring that up. They always say, "Oh, the kids never die from it. They will never die from it." Yeah, yeah but they'll spread it to people that will die. Well, that's the thing. Their we're immune worried. systems are beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, strong. Yeah, beautiful spreaders. You stupid fucks. Well, no, I but, mean the fact is they probably are far more resistant to. Not resistant to the virus, but uh, uh, a lot less uh, able to get it badly. But that doesn't yeah. mean that because they have it, they can't spread it to somebody else. And if you have an old per older person in the house, they could die as a result of it. Yeah, I think the biggest, the bigger problem I have is the 14, you know, one going in ninth grade in high school, no problem. One in, in uh, seventh grade in junior high right across the street. Mm -hmm. But the four-year-old. The four-year-old is advanced right now. They're, she's going into pre-K, pre-kindergarten, which we, she should really be in kindergarten. She's, I work with her, and she works the words and sight words and all this stuff way ahead of her age. The mm -hmm. problem is, how do you get online with a kindergarten class? I yeah. Mean, yeah. So I, I don't oh, know yeah. what's going to happen. They, they're supposed to come out with a schedule on how that, that's going to go at the elementary school. But now I'm going to have a serious issue because I got two kids in the other room signing on for classes all through the day. Now they're going to have to maybe worry about her or I need to change my hours so I can make sure she's taken care of. Well, you know, I mean, there, there is a, what is that you're showing us? Oh, is that? Uh, uh, I have a friend who has a kid in second grade. That's what that's what it looks like. She's in class right now. That's yeah. in the Philippines. Oh, OK. Oh, wow. And, right. uh, you yeah. know, what, what's I don't know what's happening there uh, exa exactly. I mean, I read different things, but here 
it's strange it, it, all in Southeast Asia a lot of businesses are going out of business like cool businesses that were kind of unique and creative and it seems like only the big ones are you know able to sort of survive this um, mm. I went to and it depends on you know which mall you're in but it just seems like it's a slow burn like and it's uneven mm. and uh, it's it's and, and I think that this is going to be with us forever. Um, I, I think it's going to be kind of like a deadly flu and next season. So New York went through a big, a big time there uh, in what, June and, June and July, or was it May and June? Mm -hmm. So I think next year it's going to hit again and it's going to be the same because you can't develop immunity to it and it'll be like the flu. I think, you, and eventually everybody will have to get it. And either you survive it or you don't. It's it's like a, you know, like a plague of sorts that that comes around. And some people will be able to get a vaccine maybe next year uh, that that sort of helps them. But it it's like the flu. You know, it'll be annual. Well, I remember, uh, when I, it was coming down. Sorry. We remember when it was coming down. Those were all the new news, hot news items. Oh, well, it's coming down now. What's going to happen back in the flu season again? They're all worried about it. And now instead of coming down, now actually we've been going up. Well, uh, you know, we're going to keep reinfecting ourselves until we finally just say, you know, I, I mean, I think we, we cut the, 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 the disease here in New York by simply, very simply, staying in. And wearing masks if we went out, and and washing our hands, and and I was wearing gloves for a while. I mean, this was a very, very, everybody was really very uh, good about this here. And we took the, we didn't even have a plateau. We went up, and then we started coming down. Yes, uh, Howard put his hand up there. Hey, guess what? What? We peaked out today. We got two hundred cases in Hawaii statewide. Wow. Well, you know, you're in a very lucky situation, or unlucky, as it were, in that you're on an isle, you're on a series of islands, you are remote from the mainland, and you can kind of, if you don't let people in, you can keep it out, okay? It's much like yeah. you do with animals so that you don't get rabies on the island, you know, things like that. By, uh, so. But the point is, is we were getting two or five cases a day now we're up to 200 a day. Oh, okay. So we were only getting two, five. Well, now you see, a if week you could go, we were up to about 50. Yesterday, 200. That's not good because you, again, you're on an island. Right. And you're, you, it has no place to go except spread. You know, um, what so far is Oahu? Not my what island. Percentage but still. Is, yeah. What? Tourism. Who, who uh, let's see, who, who, oh, yeah, what were you saying? Tourism for Hawaii, Howard. Uh, yeah. If you don't have all those tourist money coming in, uh, how, I mean, what percentage is your economy reliant on those? Because when I think of Hawaii, I just think it's all tourism. It's tourism dollars. And we haven't been letting anybody in since March. Really? So slowly yeah. they're letting people come back. Uh, if you do come, you have to quarantine for 14 days. There's a few locals that have been breaking quarantine, and then they went out and spread, and that's where we got this big peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, pretty, uh, you know. But it, it, you know, you could you could have a real problem there if it ever expands. You know. Well, wait and see. I, I'm telling you, before I was bragging how we had nothing, 200 today. What do you think next week's going to be like on Oahu? Well, let's wait and see. You know? no. But how about the other islands? How about places like Kauai and so on? Not much. Like like Maui, we may have had twenty cases. Okay, all right. Of the two hundred, well, they're going to be they're going to be unless people go back and forth between the various islands, they're going to be pretty well restricted to those islands. We are allowing inter island travel. Oh boy, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, get how, ready. How how's the death rate? I mean, is it low? Of the extremely low um we've only had 26 deaths since covid started and there probably how many cases if you had a guess total there? cases since covid started 2568 so you had how many deaths 26 yeah see you should compare that to the population of other places and see what percentage it, it's all you know it's all percentages in many ways mm -hmm. you know 
deaths per 100,000, as it were. You know what I think is going to happen, Alex? I'm going to be an optimist. I think after the election, it's going to be like the hostage crisis. After November 3rd, they're going to announce something in December that they have something. They have a vaccine. Yep. Or something. Well, they're they're expecting a vaccine by December or January. Yeah, my brother's in the ho- was in the hospital, and they told him they expect a vaccine by sometime in November. Did they? Oh, give Russia it- already has a vaccine uh, today, don't they? Who? I, yeah. I heard Russia well, already has the vaccine. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know that's Russia. Rob, did they give your brother any uh, any meds? Uh, you know, like remdesivir or hydrochloroquine or any. Well, other he didn't that? have. He didn't have, have COVID. He doesn't have oh. COVID. No. What? How is he doing? By the way, Rob. He went home today. Yeah, he had a stroke. Was it? Yes. Yeah. How bad? Mild. 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 Okay, so it didn't have much effect. It was more about AFib that caused it, a heart problem. Okay. All right. But no, he was didn't have COVID. I think they want Trump out of office, everybody. I think they've had enough of him, I think. Well, it's getting to look, it's not getting to look, it's not getting to look good for him, you know? Uh, I mean, uh, but uh, but the question is still, you know, um, is he going to leave? And uh, That was a Biden uh, no, subject. No, no. There, there are a lot of other people questioning this film. Yeah, Better well, people than you or I. Biden was one of the oh, first. He might, wouldn't he? He, he might leave, but he will always question it every day, forever. Just so like, like every day, Biden gets sworn in. He's going to say illegitimate. We have an illegitimate president. He'll be on every day on the news. Luckily, he's old. Yeah, we won't have to put up with it that long. Yes, John. Here's my prediction: He gets wiped out in the election. He doesn't even challenge it, and then and then. Uh, he gets prosecuted in that New York thing, the New York DA, for the fraud and all that stuff, and he and he uh, he, he runs off to fucking uh, Russia, where they can't indict him. lives lives the rest of his life in Russia. I'd be fine. Or he could make a deal with Biden. He could say, "I won't criticize you. I'll keep quiet. You just issue a pardon, like uh, Ford to Nixon." <clears throat> yeah, I could see Biden. Uh, 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 Patrick, did you have? Uh, did you have your hand? The liberal fuck saying that he is absolutely. Hold on a second, Patrick. Did you have your hand up? No, I'm oh, because oh, you've had it out there, and I was just wondering if it was you wanted to say something. Uh, you can pretty well, most people can pretty well jump in now because you can, I think you can pretty much hear each other. This isn't like Skype where it just buries you down and you can't hear anybody else. Um, you know, it's, there are times when I think about Trump and I think like there are aspects that I will miss because. For example, I mean, what essentially what we're going back to is the same old, same old. And I know that it's be- it's better than, you know, chaos. But I, I, if we had a competent Trump, like somebody, like if he actually tried to bridge gaps and he tried to do the job, yeah. I would really like that candidate. Because I just feel with Biden that we're we're selling out like we're, we're going back to a system that didn't work for everyone but everybody sort of agreed that it should or but is it is it the president is it the president where things weren't working or is it in the in in congress in in you know in the senate and in congress where nothing's getting done we've had presidents who tried to do things and everything is stonewalled right the republicans wouldn't let obama get things done is it the president or is it the lawmakers uh, yes, uh, um, uh, uh, BL. So, something. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 Brian Ludwig. I mean, not yeah. Perky Pat. Uh, just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not as optimistic as Bree is. What we are, if uh, Biden gets elected, we're basically electing the same type of politician that got us Trump to begin with. And two, assuming he, uh, Biden, let's say Biden uh, or his VP, uh, lasts for eight years and uh i'm not convinced that assuming of course that our country isn't off the cliff by that time financially speaking and with this pandemic uh uh someone far worse you know with the charisma of obama and reagan but with uh policies that are like twice as bad as trump's uh gets elected in biden's place 
Well, that, 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 you, yeah, but you know, here, here are the couple of There's things. There's a reason why Trump got elected. Yeah. Well, yes, but but I'm very but I'm, upset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let yeah. me put it this way: I'm not a Biden fan. Okay, I'm not a Biden supporter, but I think the vote this time is going to be those who are voting for Trump and against him, and not against Trump and for Biden. Biden is the person is the is the placekeeper for the time being until we can come up with something better. Okay. And then you drop one person, Tom Cotton. What about someone like him? If he uh, runs against Biden in twenty twenty four or runs again in twenty twenty eight. I think your big can uh, uh, if he wants to, this. your candidate in two thousand uh, in the next election after this one. Who knows if I'll be around? Uh, is uh, is probably going to be good. is probably going to be Mario Cuomo. Okay. Uh, Andrew Cuomo, excuse me, Mario Cuomo's. Dead. Mario too. We'll Mario too. We'll channel Mario. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so they, um, you know, Nancy Reagan did it, why not? Oh, I'm sorry, you, was it Nancy Reagan? What? <laughs> the seance thing? Yeah, oh, the seance, yeah, she used to hold seance. The system sand. is broken. Well, the system right. is, it's look, great. the system has been it's broken, broken for years. You know what the problem is? We keep but voting, is, right. we, we, right. we, we keep voting for two people who are supposedly different, but they both mm -hmm. represent the same system. Corporatist warmongers. Okay. Whereas, at least in other countries, you have several candidates who represent other systems. You know, there are socialist mm -hmm. candidates, there are communist candidates, there are, you know, whatever candidates uh, that are proposing a whole different way of doing business. But here, we just really have people who are varying shades of gray. And mm -hmm. that's the problem. Now, there, I think, is a big difference between Trump and Biden in that Biden is a politician and Trump is, it's all about Trump. It's self, he's self-serving and that's pretty much it, you know. But I don't think that it's... Um, uh, but here it's whatever Pfizer, Lockheed Martin, and Amazon wants, it's what Pfizer, Lockheed Martin, and Amazon gets. Well, yeah, but I mean, if it, we, we would like things to be different, but they're not going to be different until people are willing to vote for third candidates and give them a real chance at winning. And that probably won't happen, Alex, until this pandemic becomes exponentially worse or a new pandemic occurs or something even worse. Like the Great Depression well, the outgrowth of this pandemic may be more socialism, I think. Yeah. I think, because uh, capitalism obviously has, is the, uh, uh, is the co-conspirator <laughs> with COVID, you know. Well, it's like the fuel to the fire. It's not so much a co-conspirator. I guess it would be, but more like kerosene, yeah. the fire that is yeah. COVID. I, I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for. What, what's the thing when somebody enables? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 capitalism no, is an enabler. Okay. Also a catalyst. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, and I'm not saying the capitalism wouldn't be fine here if we did it in a rational manner, but we do it to the exclusion of everything else. And when we start talking about people's lives versus the economy i'm sorry it's a non-starter for me i'm t i'm voting for lives okay anyway hey listen everybody everybody's a little tired tonight i'm tired phil's tired uh rob's I laid back tired. i slept yeah. till 11 30 a.m really son of a bitch Patrick, good to see you again tonight. Let me see. First, let me say goodbye to Howard. Let me say goodbye to Charlie. Let me say goodbye to Rob. Let me say goodbye to John Larkin. Let me say goodbye to... Uh, we lost somebody here, didn't we? Um, Kevin. Kevin. Uh, let me say goodbye to uh, Brian and Phil and Brian and Tony and Patrick and Bree. And, of course, thank you to Kevin as well. Uh, what is that? Double shotgun. A, a, a AR-15 lower. Uh, oh, this boy. is the beginning of my uh, nasty gun. Oh, he's oh building my his own. God. <laughs> yeah, we want that. Anyway, Brady, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and we'll give you a big wave goodbye uh, as well. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Good night. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll be assembling another one again tomorrow night, right back here. Next, uh, doing his call-ins on, um, on uh, uh, Skype will be Jack Bishop uh, with, the inter uh, with the intersection. Yes, the intersection. 
Man, I'm out of it tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.